Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am Sir Worldwide. And again, I want to thank all my loyal subscribers. Uh, we talk about history. We talk about different things and what have you. Right now, we're going to talk about a documentary film that I'm in the process of making. It'll be finished very soon. And I expect this documentary film to be an award winner, and it will be, because I'm talking about heroes, right? Now, a lot of people think that we have sports figures that are heroes, politicians, or actors and actresses that are heroes. Eh, that ain't it. The heroes are the people who fought for this country, the veterans. And a big percentage, I, I, I think uh, someone told me it is about 70% of these veterans that are here in America are homeless. All right. I'm gonna tell you a quick story about Vietnam. This told me by a veteran, he passed on. He said they were closing down Vietnam, okay? The helicopter was being loaded with all supplies and stuff like that. They were getting the heck out of there, right? And there was about five people, all officers, except this one gentleman who was an African-American soldier, right? So they got in the helicopter, helicopter took off. Gonna fly to a ship where all the supplies were and what have you, right? But the instrument panel in the cockpit started going off crazy. The lights everywhere, it means that they're overloaded, right? So they had to land the helicopter. They did, right? So when they're taking supplies off, one of the officers told the guy that passed away, nigga, get your crap and get out of here. You ain't gonna make up with us. This guy was a high ranking officer. He couldn't argue with him. He took his stuff off. The helicopter took off and flew into the mountain and blew up. True story. All right, here's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, around this country. From October until March, the mayors from New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Troy, Cleveland, all those chocolate cities back there, they send homeless people on the bus to California. You should see San Francisco, the homeless thing up there. Oh, my God. And L.A. And they also give them a one-way ticket to Honolulu. You should see the homeless there. Oh my goodness. So, look, we got to do something that the government ain't doing it to help these people. They're just thrown in the garbage can and they serve this country. I'm gonna let these historian people talk to you right now because they got something big to tell you about what's going on and what's been happening, like Tuskegee and all that, you know? But look, we got to help the homeless. They are the heroes, as I said, not these sports figures. Uh, don't get it twisted. That's right, don't get it twisted. Here we are, sir, worldwide. I'm Don, and this is Carrie. Right on, sister. How you doing today? I'm good. Yeah, we're just here to uh, share the information about the, uh, the true heroes here in America, the ones that have given the uh, ultimate sacrifice. And they need to be acknowledged and be respected for all the their doings to make this wonderful capitalistic society keep flowing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the issue is too is uh, they probably don't know that that's what they're fighting for, an economic system under the umbrella of capitalism. So that's another story for another time. But we wanted to get into history now. You, you're good right. with the history part. Yeah, we were the, just... The history of war in this country since it got established in what, 16, 17, whatever. What, whatever, when, when they first, it all started with the Revolutionary War and it continued to escalate. I, I can just give you a brief overview. There was the uh, Civil War. There was, first it was the Revolutionary War. Then it was a civil war, War of 1812, Mexican-American War, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, and Afghanistan. So that's the history of our uh, military vets and how they were involved uh, defending for quote-unquote freedom, but uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily designed for everybody just the uh, corporate interest and those who founded the country so and for the economic uh, understanding or ramifications come forth we see what America is today and we're falling apart at the seams for not giving the respect to the vets 
to the people that made it all possible. So to the many, many men and women, um, you know, thank you for your service. Yes. And then we want to, you know, yes. want to thank all the uh, African Americans from starting at the uh, Revolutionary War all the way through uh, post-Civil War. We have to stop and acknowledge the Buffalo Soldiers. Yes. Uh, we have to then move forward and then we have to Airmen. The airmen. The the yeah, we can start airmen. with the Tuskegee Airmen in World War II. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they made proof that uh, African Americans were competent to use the technology of the day, like flying planes and uh, having war strategies and everything like that. And as a matter of fact, there's still six to eight Tuskegee Airmen alive, and we want to salute them. And, um, so we just keep going on until the day so maybe somebody in Congress or somebody in the Senate or something will take heed to give better provisions to the wounded warriors. Um, you know, they have organizations, the War Wounded Warriors of America. And, you know, they, they kind of got tossed under the bus and these were the ones that fought in the later wars like the Gulf War and the war in Afghanistan. So we just want to continue to uh, let you know that uh, the American patriots, we thank you. You know, there's a lot of patriotic people that believe in the red, white, and blue, and they keep they keep continuing to flourish and, um, and and make a stand for it. But you know, like I say, our government is not owning up to their part of the deal. Interesting. <clears throat> I, I grew up in um, in a time where I was told that there's like three avenues for black people right. and um, after slavery right. one of them was to be a criminal another one was to be a preacher and another one was to be a soldier right. so I grew up in a family that chose to be preachers and soldiers mm -hmm. and and not a lot of us chose to be criminals so but the preachers and the soldiers and and my father he was a Vietnam veteran and um, he's doing fine to this day and everything and he's a very positive and motivating uh, person for me in my life and but he's 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 um, a pessimist however he stays positive and he tries to encourage people to uphold the Constitution right. of this country and most most people who are veterans try to live up to the constitutional values of this country even though there's a little bit of confusion as to why were we over there Right, or right. why did we fight this war? And one thing I always think about is, um, well, a few things I think about, and that is um, the importance of knowing why people go to war. Specifically mm -hmm. in this country, it's usually economics. Right. And so you have the various economic systems, like traditional system, like the Amish, the right, right. agriculture, and right. you have the communist systems, right. and you have the um, socialist system, mm -hmm. and you have the capitalism. Right. And here in this country, it's it's called a mixed economy, actually, right. because it's supposed to be a little bit of all of the economic systems. Right. So, but it's mostly capitalism. But I think when people go to the military, for example, I have a son, he did the Navy for four years, but he came out of college first. He said, right. Mom, most of the people that's in the military, they're smack out of high school. Mm -hmm. They know nothing. Right. And so they go, a lot of young people go into the military not knowing anything. They don't even know why they're there. They just see right. it as a paycheck right. and the opportunity to get an education after they finish. And not so, be on the streets. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it, it's a good um, option as opposed right. to being a preacher or being a criminal. Remote. Right. So exactly. you know, exactly. many people um, choose to go into the military, which is a good thing. So like I said, I have a military family and the preacher family. Right. So all, it's very important that we we respect those who stood for America, even though they might not know what they're fighting for, they decided to put on that uniform and to stand for something. Well, let me ask you this, how did, how did they treat your father after the war? Well, my father is the only child. So oh, okay. he got much love and respect, mainly, okay. be, and he was a military police. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. so he got a lot of love and everything like that. He takes mm -hmm. advantage of all the benefits, you know, got the home and everything, mm -hmm. and, and so, He's an accountant, so okay. I grew up with the attitude to be conservative, don't spend above your means, and to take advantage of every opportunity that this country has to offer because right. black people have 
fought for these opportunities. Right. And for us to just act as if we have no rights, right. that's right. that's not telling ourselves the truth. We have a lot of rights. It's just that we're not taking the initiative to do some research on what we can do. Because right. there's a lot of stuff, more stuff that we can do than what we cannot do right. in this right. country. It's really nobody right. stopping us because after the Emancipation Proclamation, they told us we were free. We basically didn't know where to go. Oh, well, we However, had no over time with all the protests and all the right. marchings and all the new laws that have been passed, we have a lot of opportunities that other people from other countries come and take advantage of. Right. And we're sitting around complaining, condemning and criticizing, but not looking at all the, all the free money that's available to us. Well, I just want to just, just make <laughs> one point. There is mm -hmm. systemic bureaucratic racism. That means paperwork and the hoops you have to jump through and the, the forms you have to fill and maybe if your form doesn't even make it to the pile it goes straight into the round file <laughs> those are some of the obstacles but we have to uh, persevere be persistent yeah. so we can avail ourselves to those opportunities exactly and so you know for all the vets and all the um, people that have fought for this country yes uh, we appreciate you you know let's keep on fighting on until we can get that that what you need Yes. So you can, uh, so we can eradicate some of the veteran homeless because you know yeah, it, it makes that's a big deal. Yeah, it, but remember what I said about a lot of those people that a lot of the soldiers that went in they were young people right they were like 17 18 they didn't have an education they didn't have a clue, right? right so they didn't know what they were up against they didn't know how they were going to be programmed right. and 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 put into a system so that when they came out they felt like you know what did i do oh, that for it was an alien however experience. you know they didn't have they didn't get debriefed brief properly probably right, with right. a proper education right because with a proper education you will be clear on what you were fighting for because you were definitely fighting for capitalism for the most part which right. is a pretty decent system if you use it correctly yes <laughs> correct that and means correctly. you know don't be ignorant about what kind of system economic system that you live in right you know because capitalism i would prefer individual and private ownership over the government owning everything. Well, and, that's true. and I don't mind that um, the government oversees some of the corporations and everything to make sure that the corporations are being fair and treating their employees fair. So that's some of the responsibilities of the government. And that's why this is called a mixed economy right. and not just a purely capitalistic economy. Right. But we have to know these things in order to take advantage of them. And any roadblocks that we have when it comes to filling out applications or coming to getting the money right. that's available to us. Right. That's where working in groups come together. Right. Exactly. You know, we have to have unity in order to make things happen. Individuals are not very successful in this country. It's right. about groups, corporations, networking. and unity. Right. Mm -hmm. Networking. Mm -hmm. Forming an LLC, coming up with a business entity that's going to make you successful, not just as an individual, but as a group or as a team. And that's what's important because this individual stuff, we get bumped off real easy as an individual. It's a very exactly. competitive society right. and you can't compete by yourself. You have yeah. to have a team. That's correct, that's correct. Yeah, so choose your teams wisely. <laughs> okay, make sure they're uh, economically stimulating. Yes. Okay, yes. and remember to receive, you should also remember to give. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that's yes. all part of the yes. flow and that's how yes. we do it. Give your time, yeah. give you your give, resources. You give give them energies yeah so. yeah yeah so wide world folks uh, <laughs> we just give you a brief overview of what supporting the um, vets are about and yeah. uh, hopefully you got a broader perspective of how we've come through all the wars yeah. in America starting from the revolutionary all the way to Afghanistan yep and we still standing and we're still and we ready to fight some more it's gonna be um, a different type of war this time because right. the war we're fighting now we well, got an invisible little we're, virus we're, that we're, we're fighting fight, we're right fighting now we're fighting a Some psychological invisible little bug that we're fighting right now. right now isn't yeah. that crazy yeah you know we thought it was going to be a man on man, man war physical war but it's such a spiritual war yeah. right so. it is such a an invisible war but we have to prepare our minds for this type of war right we have to have the endurance mentally for this type of war right and that is probably one of our biggest challenges right. is to get our minds right so that we can fight something that we can't see with the naked eye 
Right, exactly. But it is a fight that we can win, and we are going to win it anyway. Come uh, on, viruses come and go. And remember, it's not a war <laughs> of the flesh, it's the war of principalities. Yes, yes. So get yes. your principles together. That's right, that's right. Okay, so, so we good. out. Yes, peace and blessing. Power to the soldiers. Now see guys, I told you before many times, you know, if you don't know what a Grand Slam is, look it up. These guys hit Grand Slam home runs every time they're in front of the camera. And here I am trying to fill these big shoes again. But I want to tell you something I didn't tell you. The reason these mayors send these people to these cities is because to, to Los Angeles and the West Coast, San Francisco, is because they can't freeze to death out here, or Hawaii. That's why they do that. But the young people, you know, this is a new world we have right here now. So all these wars that have come out in the past, right, where soldiers go and kill other people, right? Why can't, and, and now we got these G summits that come about, right? There was no G summits back in the day. In Vietnam, it wasn't happening. The Gulf War, there was no G, G summits, uh, people getting together from various parts of the world to talk about various issues. Why can't they do that now and eliminate men killing each other from other countries to eliminate this stuff. I mean, you know, look, we're one species. We're human species on this planet. We all got to eat. We all got blood in our veins. It's the same color. Why got to kill another man because we disagree? Uh, let, let the President of the United States, let him fight somebody oh, verbally. And his children. Yeah, and, and, and not only that, none of these politicians send their offsprings, anybody with their last name, to war. It don't happen, they don't go to war. See what I'm saying? So you young people get together, cause now you're in a political arena now. Four years ago, you didn't know nothing about voting, most of y'all, but now you can vote. Let's get the vote out there so we can make this a better world. I've been in so many countries, it's, it's unreal, unreal. But this is the best country in the world in a lot of areas. Some it ain't. You gotta pay for healthcare? You gotta pay for education? Oh, please. It ain't right. So I'm talking to the youth here, wake up and get involved. Aloha.